that's perfect for both of you guys, actually. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? So I'll just All keep right. my hand right here. <laughs> All right, so. The you guys will just hand it back and forth. The Tweedledee you just want to hold it and then just go back show. and forth? Oh. That's too close. <laughs> you sure you don't want to do This will be your intro, too. You sure you don't want to do one at a time? <laughs> no, I think this is going to be more entertaining. Here today with Thing 1 and hey. Thing 2 and their handler. <laughs> <laughs> Loopers. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it made such a loud sound. <laughs> hey, welcome to this episode of Pit Talk TV. Um, I have no clue where this first interview is going to go. Um, just setting this up, I'm, I'm scared. I'm really scared. But we're, we're so glad you're here. And like we've said before, we're going to show you some behind the scenes uh, of Pit Talk and of our Misfit team and whatnot. And that's our first interview tonight is the whatnot. So uh, we're going to introduce you to our video guy, our videographer from the roof. He's the one that gets all the shots for you. And then we're going to introduce you to one of my boys who is one of the photographers on the infield that helps me out so <laughs> here we go with this episode of pit talk tv Are you ready? All right. So, the first, the first uh, person I'd like you to meet is our videographer. This is Wyatt Bless. Wyatt is up on the roof every night until he sees lightning or it starts raining. Then he turns into this little pansy and he has to get off of the roof. No, really. Wyatt is up there day in, day out, every night, uh, getting all the great shots for you. Wyatt. How long have you been uh, part of the Misfit team now? Ooh, part of the Misfit team. I believe it's been three years or so now. And I, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for letting me be on the team and helping you guys out and everything. I enjoy it. I love being on that roof. It was against some my days. better judgment, but you know, Kyle won out that argument. But. Actually, I think I was the one that came to you and asked, <laughs> hey, do you need anybody? Because I know, you know, yeah. 
if some stuff happened or went down, and I was like, you know, I, I, want, I want something to do this year, stopped racing for a bit, and then, you know, came to you guys. With you on the roof, it's it's freed Kyle up to be able to get the drone going. Yeah, yep. And uh, his drone shots are just amazing. But before all of that happened, you were racing out here. Yes, uh, back in about my middle school years. Oof. Oh, here we go. <laughs> back three years ago. It was not three. Sorry. Four. Longer. <laughs> um, but no, I raced Super Cups, Super Cups for a little bit. You actually said it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. I did say it. But no, I raced the Super Cups for uh, all through middle school, and then a little bit in high school I did it. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was, it was enjoyable. The group I was with was great wonderful always helpful and everything like that and then uh i hit <laughs> i got loose in three and four ended up hitting four and then that kind of after that it took a little too much to get the car back going and so we were like you know what we're just we're done with this headache and there were some other issues with it too that we were having so i can see part of the problem you nodded that way and said three and four i was looking at you which is over there but <laughs> If you think that's three and four, that may have been some of your issue. I mean, yeah, I, I, who knows? It's a fair now, point. you went from Super Cups, and then didn't you have a sixer for a little bit? The yes. The five-cylinder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, uh, we got a sixer. I was going to race that last year. Um, but then as we were doing some work on it, we broke some parts. We actually broke the one of the spark plugs in the block, which we couldn't get that out. And then... I was going to try and do a half and half, do my races and, you know, record and, and help you guys out and all that stuff. But then I started enjoying uh, recording too much. And I was like, you know what? Forget the sixer. I'm just going to keep doing this. This is too it much is fun. It is a lot of fun. It is. I I've really enjoy it. I've done it one time. I was only allowed to do it one time. And it was a Wednesday night. And I was up on the roof, set all the gear up all by myself. You know, I'd seen it done like once. <laughs> and I set it all up, and it was way before Kyle had it streamlined the way you've got it. Yeah. I mean, I was carrying like 25 bags up the, the stairs to get all the gear up there. It was more than I two don't bags. know. The camera guy back there is saying like two bags. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah. So you're old, is your age getting to you? Or? Excuse me? Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But anyway, we're really glad you're here. I know your Thank dad you. works Thank down you. in the pits too, and we're gonna uh, try and get uh, RB on. Oh, I'll help uh, you. Don't worry. On a uh, pit talk. So, what is uh, what's your plan um, for after racing here? Do you have any yet? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure yet. Wherever you guys would go, I'd like to follow. To be honest with you, if you still need me. Oh wow. <laughs> That's a shameless like bag, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just say it. If you guys still need me, I'd be more yeah, than happy to, to follow and help you guys out and stuff like that. Always. But part yeah. of it, too, is also kind of where my dad decides to go to be an official if he does go anywhere else. That, awesome. too. Well, we're really glad to have you part of the team. And everybody that watches Pit Talk or everybody that watches the YouTube videos sees your work. And your work, if you go way back to the beginning and then you go to like last week. It is totally different and it's amazing work and you do a really good job up there. Thank I you. love teasing you. <laughs> I love giving you a hard time about, um, you know, being on the roof and being, know. you know, <laughs> and your mom is in the stands yep. and I get a kick out of it because she has her scanner going and we always wave, hi mom. I'm still waiting for the biscuits and gravy breakfast that we were promised for Bahamas last year. Me Didn't too. Didn't get it, but anyway. Hey, thanks for being a part of, of uh, the you. Misfit team. We really appreciate it. Now, if you hand the, the mic oh, so set up over to this guy, <laughs> this is really cool. Not many, um, not many parents get to work on a project with not only one of his sons, but all three. Um, my one son, Joshua, who helped me on the infield do photos, um, is chasing a dream, and we just love it. He's chasing a dream in, down in Arizona, and he gave up uh, doing photography out here with me. And so his twin brother stepped in to take his place, never holding a camera before, not really knowing what was happening. And we just said, hey, Simon, um, you're going to be shooting pictures with me. <coughs> and Simon, excuse me, 
Simon has really stepped up and he's shooting some really good stuff. So I want to introduce you to my brother Simon. Your brother? My brother Simon. <laughs> brother Simon. Actually, it's Kyle's brother Simon <laughs> and my son, one of my three. And um, so Simon, I, I always ask, how long have you been coming out to the racetrack? Uh, as early as I can remember. You always used to bring me. I did. All the time. Said, wear sweatpants, wear something long, it gets cold up in the stands. I did. So I started bringing all you guys out uh, at a very early age. But um, what did you think when we told you you were going to be shooting pictures? We didn't really give you the chance to say no. We just No, said, you didn't. This is what you're going to be doing. Well, I remember you took me up to Slinger once and handed me a camera. I stood up on that mound in that big Carhartt jacket, and uh, you, I shot on automatic. Yeah. And <laughs> beginner mode. And... Um, <laughs> You liked what you saw, I think. Yeah, after we got done going through the 3,600 photos that night, <laughs> and it was only a 36-lap race. But, no, I really, uh, your work is, you do a really good job. What do you, what's one of your favorite things about being down here where the action is? Getting to do, and do what you want and go where you want and just kind of have everyone be okay with it. Any scary <laughs> moments? Uh, I see, I remember this one time. <laughs> Remember the monster truck? That's what I was thinking yeah. of. You he took off running. Didn't he, he? All he did was tip the barrier. I was scared for nothing. Some of oh. us just stood our ground, didn't move. Still got the shot. But uh, got the shot. Wait, no, I didn't. Yeah. Somebody else took off running across the crib because the monster truck was loose. <laughs> hey, it was coming right for me. Yeah, it was. Well. Miss you. <laughs> it was. So, are you having a good time? Is oh, it yeah. fun? I'm having a blast. I love coming out here. This is pretty much a second home. Oh, so it's, it's, it's safe to say, you know, this this racetrack, oh, yeah. you know, it's part of your DNA too, Pretty just much. like all of us. So, Wyatt and Simon, thanks for being a part of the Misfit <laughs> team. And, you know, um, you begged to be a part of it. He was forced to be a part of it. Yeah, at least but you got a choice. The, the cool thing is, it's a really good team. It is. And, and we have a good time together. And... Uh, Someday we'll have to talk about the day we all went to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> oh, no, Kyle's going, no, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. So, hey, thanks a lot, you guys. Appreciate you being on Pit Talk and letting us talk with you a little bit and having this a good time. This is really cool. Um, I'm honored to be sitting next to this gentleman right here. Um, many of you have watched a lot of Kyle's videos over the years and know uh, his dad. His dad was our uh, regular announcer, and uh, John Magnuson. This is Greg Magnuson. Uh, John passed away a couple of years ago, um, right during the height of COVID, and we lo we lost a, a great advocate for the Rockford Speedway for uh, racing. In fact, uh, he had a program called Racing at Rockford, if yes, I remember right. He did. So the Deerys have reached out to Greg and asked Greg if he would kind of step in his dad's shoes a couple of times this year. Uh, you announced tonight. I did, yeah. And you've got a few more announcement engagements here at the track yep. down the line. Mm -hmm. So tell me um, a little bit about how you got out here. Well, you know that your dad is, was a big influence, but how long have you been coming out? Uh, I started probably coming out here since I was about one years old. Uh, I think 1997 or 1998 was probably the first time that my dad actually took me out here, but I was way too young to remember a lot of the racing out here. Um, and then obviously when Papini had crashed and he had obviously that fatal accident, I was here when I was a kid. And that was a terrible thing, but uh, I'd say probably this is probably my 26th year coming out to the Rockford Speedway. Wow. Mm. 26. <laughs> oh, yeah. It makes me think back, but... One thing, when we get here early, when the Misfit team gets here early, and we get here about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, um, practice doesn't start for an hour or so after we get here. Qualifying doesn't start till like 5.35. But we're here, we're in the pits, we're working. And one thing I've noticed is you kind of picked up where your dad, uh, <laughs> something your dad used to do. He had a clipboard. Oh, yeah. And he went pit to pit to pit, and he talked to the drivers and took notes. Oh, yeah. He might ask them a question and, and get to know something about their team. So when he's announcing, he's got some notes that he can ad-lib or fill in 
Um, and you were doing that tonight. I was. I was. Um, I was told by a lot of people, you know, after all that stuff had happened, my dad and he passed away. They said, "I hope you keep the tradition on talking to all the drivers." And I mean, the the drivers are the reason why the fans come out here. We love watching these guys race out here week in, week out. You know, they're multiple personality people. They're all really nice people. And uh, you know, I, I wanted to engage in a lot of that with the drivers and stuff. And it was just. I got goosebumps coming here when I was, and I got here super early and just talking to the guys. I mean, I was really shy at first, but I had a blast and I, mean, I wanted to do a lot of my dad did. I mean, not the same, but the same aspect, I guess. But it was, yeah, I was. That, so did you have a good time tonight? Oh, I, I had a blast. I, I, I want to keep doing this. This is so much fun. I, I was really nervous, but it was uh, after the beginning of the race started, I fell on my elements and I just pretended like I was a kid of my little matchbox cars in the bed just going in, around the track you know it was it was so much fun did you um did you have to work through some emotions or did you have enough adrenaline going that it's just like this is what dad would do not I want to be like dad or anything but this is how dad would have done it and you just kind of jumped in there and didn't really think about um the emotional side of things it's, um when I when I first got to the track, it was I was pretty emotional. I, I didn't know how tonight was go. I, I I really wanted to succeed tonight. I didn't want to screw up or anything like that because my I, I look at criticism as ways to improve myself so much. And uh, when I first started announcing tonight, I was I was pretty 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 nervous and I was just like I was full of emotions. But once the races started going and they were racing, he raced and all that stuff, and I got all the information out. I, I was in my element and I was just back of my mind didn't even think about it i saw that uh, we had uh, spec drags tonight so we had dave down here with the uh, green flag but i noticed <laughs> tom deary or uh, david deary was doing the announcing and i looked and you're up in the starter stand yeah I, so how did that come about that they tell you you're going to be waving the checkered flag today Is I, that just to honor your dad oh i i so <laughs> I, I watch all of your guys' videos on YouTube, and the thing that I notice on the spectacular drags is the people on YouTube are very mean. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't, my, my thing tonight was I, I first night I, I was comfortable, but I was like, I didn't want to do it and then be like, oh, it's the, the fat guy in the purple shirt. He's messing up already. <laughs> so, so I. Well, yeah. Now, in fairness, the YouTube fans are absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, do have their own opinion on yes. how things should be running. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they can be in Australia. Yeah. And tell uh, Kyle uh, through comments of how he should be doing things as if they were here. Right. And so that's the cool thing about um, the YouTube fans is they take ownership of the channel. Yes. It doesn't really belong to Misfit. It belongs <laughs> to all the fans and, and everybody, and they take it on. Yes. <laughs> and they are race fans, mm -hmm. and they have their favorites, and they're not so favorites. And, yeah, they kind of picked at your dad a little bit. And But if you go back <laughs> even farther... They picked at everybody. Yeah. You know? they, so, you know, don't take it personal. It's, you know, every, what is it um, with football? They call them Monday, uh, uh, Tuesday morning quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, or armchair quarterbacks. Hey, we got the same <laughs> thing. You know, we have Sunday morning flagmen, you know, they, they, they know how to uh, uh, call the race yeah. from 5,000 miles away. Well, that was a bad call, but you <laughs> weren't here. But, you know what? They interact, they're part of it, and they take ownership of it, and that's what the channel is all about. Yeah. And um, now, before we let you go, yeah. you've had some exciting things happen over the last few months. I, I have. I hear you have a new little one running around the house. I do. She, uh, her name is Juliana. She's uh, six months old now. Um, tonight we had a. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> my uh, my step. So my fiance came out here tonight. I was. She didn't know she was going to come out here tonight, and she's my biggest fan. And uh, we took out her son. We took both the kids last weekend, and they both had a blast. They were watching the races, you know. And um, tonight we just decided to take our son out here because it was just it was a lot for just her, you know. And I didn't want to overwhelm her. So, but yeah, she she keeps me busy, and I, I love her death. She is so funny. She's that's, she's got a very big personality. <laughs> that's great. Well, folks, uh, look forward to seeing this guy a couple more times this year. He said he thinks he's got a, a, at least four more engagements that he's gonna be announcing here at Rockford. So on behalf of the Misfit team, um, we wanna thank you for coming on Pit Talk tonight. Of course. And uh, it's really cool to see you kind of step in your dad's shoes and 
take off where he left off. And, um, you know, um, there were a couple times tonight, you wouldn't think that you could hear, but you can hear over where the where I sit and, and stand in my car is. I, I can hear the announcer, and I looked a couple of times. You, <laughs> there was a, you said a couple of things that reminded me of your dad. So, well, congratulations. We're glad you're here. We're glad that you're going to be able to participate in the last lap uh, season. Of course. And um, thanks again. Of course. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me on. All right. <laughs> Saturday night at Rockford Speedway. You don't often get a chance to see this this guy you see his face you see the back of his head you see, see my him, ass you, see, <laughs> you usually see him up there in the in the stand this is dave sankey and he's our flagman so dave yep. um first off we see that you're holding this really cool picture that was presented to you tonight by the dearies uh, apparently they were cleaning out closets mm -hmm. and things to get the lodge ready to go yep. and they came across this picture. What can you tell us about it? Well, back uh, June 10th of 1978, I drew this picture for Hugh Deary and gave it to him. I, I don't know if it was a Saturday night or not or whenever if that June 10th was, but I gave it to him back there in 1978. It does. Now, it's got your name on it, mm -hmm. June 10th, 1978. And so now uh, May, what the hell is the date today? The 26th of 2023, I got it back. What did they say, 45 years later? It, yeah. it came back to you. So I was. That's kind of cool. Seven, almost eight. June 30th is my birthday, so. Right. Yeah. So how long have you been flagging? Um, well, where's Jack still here? He left. Uh, back in 98, uh, I was in the Banky's Turn 2 garage. Actually, this weekend. It was a Thursday, though. Jack said he needed a flagman for Saturday night or Memorial weekend. I said, hell yeah. I'll, he goes, I'll pay you 50 bucks. I said, shit, I'll pay you 50 bucks. And so I don't think any money ever exchanged, but um, I was in Banky's garage. and Sweet. So back this Saturday night in 98, I flagged my first race. Now, I know you've been flagging here, mm -hmm. um, but I've seen you in other stands at other tracks. Did, yeah. did, you, did you flag with a series? I also flagged for the Tundra Super Late Models with the Panniers, and then uh, Big 8, David Deary's series, and then with Tim Z in the Mid-American Stock Car Series. So, so you keep busy. Yes, I do, so and I work. A, in addition to being a flagman, what, what do you do for a living? I am a truck driver for Stencer Excavation and Blacktop in Rockford. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, needless to say, you're quite busy all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Monday through Friday, Saturday here. And then if they got out events, you know, work on a Sunday, like last weekend. Okay. So, so one of the uh, goofiest places I've seen a starter is down by the crib as the figure eight gets ready to kick off. Yeah, What is fun. that like when you look down the X and you look into turn two and you see these cars coming at you and you know you got to wave the flag, but get out of the way? Well, back in 98 when I was faster, that was okay, but now I'm a <laughs> 52 and a little slower, but Stick it's so little... cool. It's still, it's still adrenaline rush. It's a good time. It is. I enjoy it. It really is. I hope they don't hit me. I've almost been run over once or twice, but. And uh, I remember back in the day, the flagman here was Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and Tom used to run across the track and jump up on the wall mm -hmm. and, and start. And Tom Paul. Yep. And uh, yeah, we, I used to do that too. Then finally I'm like, man, this is crazy. So I started <laughs> running that way to the crib, except for the bus figure eight. Then I run over here because that's, man, that's scary shit. You got to get out of oh, there. Man, yeah. The hell with that. Yeah. You guys can stand in the crib. I'm not. So. Oh, um, a lot of people probably want to know, do you, um, are you the decision maker when it comes to who throws the, the yellow flag, who throws the white flag? I'd say. Or do you have somebody in your ear telling you? I have the tower, the race director in my ear, but I mean, I've thrown yellow flags, you see something, you throw it. I mean, yeah. just like that tire off tonight, I want yellow, red, and then they're going in. So, I mean, it's a team, we so, to be a team. So if you're not, a, if you don't work together, I mean, sometimes you make mistakes and Oh, you know, I guess that's the way it goes, but yeah. we, I think Steve and I work together well on uh, Saturday nights and big eights, so. so. Well, it's a big you know, operation. There's a lot of pieces that yeah. are moving all the time, and uh, one of the key pieces is having you up in the stand. You know, you're giving signals to our pace car driver, you know, mm -hmm. and you're making sure that he knows that we're coming one more to, to green, 
and he, your field coming out of four knows that, yeah, we're coming to green on the next lap, you know. And then, in addition to all of that, you have guest starters sometimes up yeah, there. That's you got to tap them on the shoulder, and yep. and they're out there waving. Give them a quick tutorial and yeah. let them know what to do. So that's a lot of fun. Out of turn four, here so, they come. Right. So that's fun. Yeah. So uh, you frustrating know, some nights, but it, <laughs> it's safe to it say you know, even though the track's going to close up, so. you still got a lot of flagging and a lot of racing to do yet. Yeah. yeah so it is sad. Seventy-six years. Yeah. I've been around. My parents worked here. Um, till 1980, and then I came back when I got my driver's license in '86, and I was flipping burgers in the back stretch. Then I left in '89 to go to school. Came back and quit because I don't know Tom or Jack pissed me off. Then I came back again and Tom or Jack pissed me off. And then '95, I'm like, all right, I came back and I basically been here. In '06, I was a flight till I was flagman in '98 to '06, and then I left and then. Here I am again, so hey, it's I get all to finish family. out the 76 years, which is cool, so I'll take that. It's all family. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on Pit Talk. I know it's, it's fun. something that we've been wanting to do, and we're going to do more of this this year with talking with some of the support staff and mm-hmm. some of those that we see, but we don't really know a whole lot about them. So, Dave, I want to thank you for no being problem. on Pit Talk. Thank you Make for sure getting, my picture getting up there that. and you're bringing your picture. And, my, you know, I'm bringing my picture. They found it. They were going to trash it, and then here yeah. it is. So. And now he's going to put a new piece of glass in it and mm-hmm. probably hang in his office. So. Yep. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Jack, Susie, and David. Appreciate it. Glad you didn't throw it away. So, And there you have it. Thank you.